Hi there! I hope you are feeling creative and ready to make some crafts. Now we have three crafts today that go along with a beautiful passage from Ephesians chapter 4. This passage has a lot of important truths that it touches on. It has to do with not letting the sun go down while you're angry and not sinning in anger, but with being kind and tenderhearted and building up one another and speaking words of truth and imitating Jesus. Lots of beautiful things are in this passage. So we have three crafts that go along with different elements of that passage. Now the first one that we're going to make is a bit of a, it's an, it's an interactive multi-person craft in a sense. So you're going to want to do this with a group. And what you're going to do is you're going to be making a building. So you're going to start out with several pieces of paper and you're going to have students, it's kind of a multi-step thing. You're gonna have students first take their pieces of paper and sort of create their building with these building blocks of paper. So they might cut out different sizes of rectangles or triangles or however they'd like their building to go. And they can kind of arrange how they think they'd like their building to be on the piece of paper. So maybe they've got some different blocks. Maybe they've got some sort of a tower or something that goes along with it. I encourage them to be creative and do whatever they'd like to do with this. And surprise, just so happens I have two pieces of paper under there. And so this part is their creation. They can they can make their building whatever shape they like, but they're first just cutting out the blocks. So once you've got all of your building blocks cut out, we'll just start with that for simplicity's sake, uh, then here comes the fun part. So now they're going to take those shapes and now ideally, depending on the size of your group, you would want to have enough shapes so that you could say, if you have six students, you could pass each student a block. So you would want to have enough shape for each kid to have a block from someone else's. But if you have a large group, then just choose an objective number. So here we go. I've got my pieces of paper. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now I'm going to take those pieces of paper and get the cat out of the way. And then we're going to theoretically pass these pieces of paper out to the other students in the room. So each student will get a piece of paper. Now before you do that, write down, so it doesn't get confusing, we'll see what's gonna happen in a moment. Write down, have the kid write down their name on the back of this. So they'll write their name on each of their blocks and then they'll pass these blocks out to the other students in the room. Now, the other students will then have this pile of blocks. This could take a while, especially if you do, if each student gets each other's blocks, you might have a lot. Now the other students are going to write down positive things about the other kids in the room. So let's say they've got, okay, I'm going to write down positive thing, smiles a lot. Or they're gonna write, basically they're going to write compliments to these students who are in, who are written on the back of their blocks. So helps people. They'll write, and we're not going to go over all of them for timing's sake, but they're going to write positive statements on those blocks and then give the original person back. They'll look at the back to see whose paper it is, then give those people out their items. Then they come back to the original owner and they should have, each one will have a lovely little statement, a lovely compliment on it. And now the student's gonna go, wow, look at all these nice things people say about me. And then they're going to glue those pieces of paper down. Now, it might be that maybe the, the way that they were originally gonna lay their shape could change according to the ways people have written their comments or they could leave it the same. I'm gonna come back and glue down all of these pieces of paper. So now at the end of the day, again we didn't write on all of them because of timing, but now you'll have 
this new building and you are building one another up. Building each other up with kindness. So now you have this building made of kind words written by your classmates. So that is craft number one. Now slide that guy out of the way. Craft number two. Actually, the next couple of crafts kind of have to do with this anger topic. Now, it's important to discuss with students as you're going through this that being angry itself is not necessarily a horrible, sinful thing. We all get angry, and that's okay. That's an emotion. It's okay to feel anger. But the emphasis on this passage is in your anger, do not sin. So don't be so overcome by anger that you do what you shouldn't do. So we're going to make a little mask or a little sign to remind us to be kind rather than angry. So on one side, we're going to have our angry man. And you could also, if you want to get fun and creative with this, you can have a little sunset in the background. Because what the passage says is don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. So essentially, don't harbor a grudge. Don't continue to be mad at something. Reconcile, make peace, and that's gonna help everyone feel better. So here's our sunset here. We're gonna draw this little sunset. And a little reminder over here. Don't let the sun set on anger. And then we also have our little angry man. So you can use googly eyes. Here's my sunset. Does it look like a sunset? I hope it looks like a sunset. Maybe it's a sunrise. That's okay too. Well, that doesn't really go with the passage, but we could use googly eyes or we're just going to draw some eyes here. And this person is angry. So here's our angry eyes. We may add arched eyebrows here. And this is a reminder, yes, sometimes we feel angry. That's okay. See, my frown is the same shape as the sunset. Don't let that sun set on that frown. But the flip side here is we're going to, we're going to do some hearts because we want to be tenderhearted, be kind, and tenderhearted. And this, since this person is kind, they're going to speak kind words. And so we're going to have a humongous smile. Speak kind words. So here's, I mean, in fact, if you wanted to, you could turn this whole plate into a smile. Here's our smiling, happy, speaking kind words mouth. Now we're going to turn this into a little bit of a mask by securing it with a popsicle stick or a larger stick, whatever kind of stick you'd like to use. And here we have Our angry man. Don't be angry. Be kind hearted. Yay. So there is craft number two, reminding us to speak words of kindness and not anger. Now, craft number three also goes along with that anger element in a sense. We're going to make a little stress toy. So you can do this in a multitude of ways. We're going to use a sock, take an old sock or any sock, whatever, just make sure it's clean, preferably. And we're going to stuff the socks with stuff. Now, depending on what you use, you might want to decorate it before you stuff it. So if you're going to use something like puffy paint, wait, because then it will be everywhere. In fact, 
puffy paint goes everywhere no matter what. But you could also use markers. Well, fabric markers or printer markers are going to be best. And you can write something on it like breathe through anger or smile or even Jesus loves you as a happy reminder. And by the way, it's a little hard to write on socks. Just letting you. And then once you have your decoration, or you could just have the kids write their initials or however you'd like to decorate it writing wise, then you're going to stuff it. And to stuff it, you can use, you can use a lot of different things. You can use rice and beans. You can use, this is just like a cotton batting like you might use for a quilt. You can use cotton balls. You can use another sock. There's lots of ways that you can stuff your sock, but you stuff it up and then you have your lovely little thing here. Now, this kind of serves a fun dual purpose because you also want to secure it. I'd recommend, especially if you've got something loose like rice or beans, a rubber band or something first and or a ribbon and or a pipe cleaner or something like that something that will secure your lovely toy. Now, here's where I mentioned this is a two-fold kind of a thing because what this is going to be is you could also secure it with super glue or hot glue or whatever. If you want to, you could throw on some little jewels, make it sparkly, be dazzled. Um, but then you have this. This is something you can squeeze in times of anger or stress or you could also, you could squeeze down on it. You could, it could be kind of a mini punching bag, not to whack your neighbors with, but to take out your anger on. Or you could also, if you get really mad and you just need to throw something, this is where the cotton comes in handy because it's very light and fluffy. You could always just chuck it across the room. And that's fun too. And kind of releases your anger a little bit. So that's our stress toy, anger release reliever to remember don't let that sun go down while you're still angry, but be careful and pray and speak kindness and love one another, right? Always love one another. Go get that toy. Anyways, hopefully those give you a few ideas of ways to elaborate on and teach and communicate kindness and friendship and understanding. And as always, feel free to adapt this and change it and make it your own and do whatever works best for you. But hopefully this will be something that can bless your ministry and serve as a tool to jumpstart your idea train going. As always, we do have new crafts and messages that come out every week. So please like and subscribe, tune in, go make some crafts, make some disciples. We'll see you next time.